Hey everyone, Chef Ryan here from Growing Chefs Ontario for our July Kids Cooking Class where we're taking a look at cherries. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a sour cherry veroniki. Pardon my Russian. Uh, if you're not familiar with veroniki, it's a Eastern European dumpling. Picture a pierogi with sour cherry and cheese filling inside. Let's get started. To make this recipe, we're going to start with our dough because it needs a half an hour to rest. So I'm going to combine in one bowl a half a cup of milk, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, one large egg, and one tablespoon of sour cream. I'm going to whisk these ingredients together until they're very, very well incorporated and you can't see the sour cream or the egg anymore. I've got my ingredients all mixed together. Now I'm going to marry them with my dry ingredients. So in a separate bowl, I have two cups of flour. Using my hands, I'm going to make a little bit of a well in the center. And then I'm going to pour my egg and milk mixture into the center. It's okay if it spills out a little bit. And using a wooden spoon, I'm going to slowly start to mix in the flour. If I try to mix it together too quickly, I'll have a really lumpy dough and I don't want that. I want a nice smooth dough for my dumplings. Once you find you start to have trouble mixing, you can switch over to using your hands. Make sure they're clean first. And you're going to incorporate the rest of your flour. This part will probably take about five to seven minutes. So don't worry, just keep going and you're going to want to incorporate all the flour that you have in your bowl. I've got all of my flour fully incorporated to my dough now. You can see it's nice and smooth. I'm going to put it in a clean bowl and cover it with a clean tea towel and let it rest at room temperature for a half an hour. While our dough is resting, we can make the filling for our dumplings. While our dough is resting, we're going to make our filling for our dumplings. So we need a cup of sour cherries. To pit our cherries, we're just going to remove the stems. And I use my thumb to just sort of break the cherry in half, just taking the seed out. You'll want to make sure that you catch any juices that come out of your cherry as well. This recipe is really special to me because I actually harvested these cherries from my backyard. Looks like we have our cup of cherries now. I'm going to take a small pot and put it on uh, medium heat. Add my cherries to that with the juices that came out of it. And a quarter cup of sugar. I'm going to simmer this together for about seven minutes until the cherries start to break down and release their juices and all of the sugar is dissolved. You'll notice that our sugar is fully dissolved and is starting, our cherries are starting to release a pinky color. This is going to become our sauce. We want our cherries to start to break down and get nice and soft. My cherries are nice and soft. They've released all of their liquid into the saucepan. I'm now going to strain them. Make sure you don't get rid of that juice. Just set it aside for later. And then I'm going to put my cherries into a bowl and let them cool down completely. 
Depending on the thickness of your reserved sauce, you may need to return it back to the saucepan to reduce it a little bit. So by reducing, we're just evaporating the water and concentrating the flavors of the cherry juice and making it more of a sauce. My cherries have cooled completely. I'm now going to add my cup of cottage cheese. You want your dumplings to be both sweet and savory at the same time. You can serve them for dessert or an appetizer or just a snack as they are. So because I want them to be a little sweet and savory, I'm going to add a pinch of salt to my filling and mix it all together. If you have extra filling after you're done stuffing your dumpling, this makes a great snack on its own. My dough has rested for a half an hour now. You can see it's nice and smooth. I'll take it out of my bowl and I'm just going to work with half of it at a time. So we'll cut it in half. The half that I'm not using, I'll return back to the bowl and cover it with my cloth again so that it doesn't dry out. This recipe makes about 16 dumplings. I'm going to flour my table so that my dough doesn't stick to the table. And I'm going to roll out my dough nice and thin. You can see the dough is nice and smooth. There are no lumps in it. It's exactly what we're looking for. When you cook your dumplings, the dough will puff up a little bit. So you probably want to go a little on the thin side with your rolling than on the thicker side, but not too thin that your filling breaks through. As I'm rolling, I'm alternating directions so that I get a nice even thickness all across the dough and adding flour as needed so that my rolling pin doesn't stick. You want your dough about the size of a dinner plate and then we can start punching out our dumplings. So today I'm using a glass. Uh, you can use a round cookie cutter if you'd like. Try to get your cookie cutter as closely together to each other as possible so that you don't waste any of the dough. When you're looking for a cookie cutter or a glass size to punch out your dumplings, you'll want to choose something that's roughly the size of a tennis ball. Now that I've punched out all of my dumpling wrappers, we can start filling them. To stuff our dumplings, I'm going to take one piece of my dough and start to stretch it out just a little bit. After you cut the dough, it tends to retract on you. I'll place it in one hand and I'm going to take about a tablespoon of my filling and place it right in the center of my dough. Starting in the middle, I'm going to bring it together and pinch it and work my way along each side, making sure that I seal it really, really well. I'll keep stuffing my dumplings until there's no dough left. As I'm working, I'm putting my finished stuffed dumplings on a floured baking sheet. This way they don't weld themselves to the baking sheet. Now that you have all of your dumplings stuffed, the hard part's over, trust me. We can start cooking our dumplings now. So I have a small pot of boiling water. Again, you're going to want an adult to help you with this part. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And slowly and carefully, I'm going to use a slotted spoon or a pair of tongs to put my dumplings into the boiling water. I'll do about three at a time. I don't wanna drop the temperature of my boiling water. The bubbles will help the dumplings, or the bubbles will help prevent the dumpling from gluing themselves to the bottom of my pot. 
can stir them around a little bit so that they don't stick. And you know that your dumplings are done boiling when they float to the surface of the water. You can see our dumplings have just risen to the surface of the water and they're ready to come out now. Gently with a pair of tongs, remove them from the water, being careful not to squish the filling out and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. Now that all of our dumplings have boiled, it's time to gently pan fry them. I have a medium sized pan on medium heat. I'm going to take a little bit of oil, just so that they don't stick to the pan. I'll let my oil get hot and then I'll add my dumplings. I'm looking to fry them just so that they're a nice golden brown color on both sides. I know these are a lot of steps, but I promise you it's all going to be worth it in the end. I'm going to add my dumplings and I'm going to cook them for about five minutes on each side. Make sure that your dumplings aren't too wet. We know that hot oil doesn't like water. You can hear the dumplings start to fry and make sure that you don't overcrowd your pan. My Baraniki are nicely golden brown on both sides, so I'm going to very carefully remove them from my pan and put them on a plate. I like to serve mine with a side of sour cream because sour cream makes everything better, right? Now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper on top of my dumplings. And that sauce that we set aside earlier has thickened up and I'm going to drizzle that all over top of my dumplings. Give them a nice red color, but it also adds a lot of flavor. And there we have our dumplings.